This is Joshua Stern, and thanks again for taking the time to watch our video blog. Today's topic, multiple offers in the seller's market. Right? So I just want you to be aware when inventory is tight, you've got a lot of buyers that are trying to buy the same home. I mean, it's not uncommon that we'll have properties that have over 30 offers and that's frustrating for a buyer. And sometimes you feel like, you know what, never mind, I'll just not write an offer. But today I want to teach you how to write an offer that will stand out above the rest. Number one, I want you to look at that earnest money, okay? Earnest money tells the seller that you're serious about getting to the closing table. Now, a lot of times in, let's say the $350,000 range, buyers are putting down $1,000, $1,500, $2,000, but you're gonna be putting a down payment of $6,500 to $7,500 down on this house, maybe even more than that. Why not put earnest money around $6,500? It's your money anyway. You get to the closing table, you just use it for your down payment. It's brilliant. And you're gonna make your offer contingent upon certain inspections and your approval of these inspections actually occurring. So in the event that something does go awry, you still have an out plan and you retain your earnest money if you do so within the contract. All right, the second good idea for you is this. Every buyer that we have will have an approval letter, right? So we got 30 offers on one property, a bunch of pre-approval letters, but I want you to take this one step further. It's what we call the golden ticket, all right? So you can talk to our preferred lenders, Veritas, and they'll provide you a full underwriting for your charge. And this is actually a document that shows the seller that you're essentially a cash buyer. And we know in this market, cash is king. So help rise your offer above the rest with something as simple as getting an approval letter or a full underwriting letter or what we call the golden ticket. Then I want you to consider maybe writing a letter to the seller and using their name and saying, here are all the things that we love about your property and here's who we are and we fell in love with your house after looking at 30 umpteen homes and this is the house for us and we think little Johnny and little Sue are gonna be a great addition to the neighborhood. We're just excited to be here. Thank you so much for considering our offer. The other thing I want you to consider too are the due diligence timeframes and the appraisal timeframes. You see, if you're working with our lender, for instance, you have a full approval letter, right, and complete underwriting approval letter, you don't need an extra 21 days to go through the loan process, okay? They've already ran you through the loan process. So for uh, 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 an, uh, a financing contingency, keep it short, 14 days, maybe even less than that. Maybe you don't even need a financing contingency after all. You might need an appraisal contingency, but just talk to your lender. Have them or the, the appraisal right out of the gate so you're not waiting. You can get an appraisal done in seven to 10 days, okay? Same thing with your inspections. Obviously, you wanna inspect the home that you're gonna spend your hard-earned money on, biggest investment of your life. I'm just saying, see if you can get an inspector lined up ahead of time that can do that inspection in three or four days, give you a couple of extra days to review the items and negotiate in the event that there are issues that come up. But I want you to be aware, in this market, sellers are like, I'm not gonna deal with any of these little piddly wink uh, issues. The only issues that we're seeing sellers take care of now are serious safety concerns, major deferred maintenance items that sellers weren't previously aware of, all right? Now, the other thing I want you to consider, and this is really important, you guys, is possession period. You see, buyers, of course, when you buy the house, you want to go and move in right away. But understand that sellers have to move too, right? Maybe they've been there 15, 20 years. they got a lot of stuff to get out of that house. Give them some extra time to get out of the house. Three or four days, what's that really going to cost you in the end? Also realize that a seller might actually be trying to buy another house, so they're going to have to move and do the whole thing. You might want to consider giving the seller some extra time, perhaps a short-term interim occupancy agreement. Maybe you receive some small compensation for the day-to-day -day that they're in the property. But definitely know that to a seller, sometimes having some extra time to get out of the property is handsome and helps your offer rise to the top. I've got a few more strategies for you, but that's all I've got for this video. If you're looking to win in this market, I want you to give us a call or send us an email. Thanks so much for watching our video blog.